Hi everybody, welcome to my big backyard. I thought today I would take you on a quick look of my vegetable garden. It's about six o'clock in the evening and it's Saturday, July 23rd. So we're just gonna take a look around the garden and see what I have growing and how it's doing and we'll harvest some things that I can harvest. There's not gonna be a ton of harvestable stuff, but we'll see what we've got. So we're gonna start down here on this end with my pepper plants. Um, they look a little dry and weird at the top. I'm not sure exactly what causes that, but they're all still nice and green. We're going to come down here and see what I've got. This pepper here, this little one is a yum yum sweet pepper. You can see I've got one here. They look like they could wait another day or two for me to harvest them. Uh, as far as I know, these are green on this plant but I haven't actually left any to turn red. Um, right here is an Anaheim chili. I've got one right here um, and a couple up here. They're green. Um, oh, here's another a big one back here. Check this guy out. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull this one off. Why not? So one Anaheim chili pepper, beautiful. Um, the others I'm gonna leave on there for a little bit. This next pepper over is a big gym chili. Let's see if I have any on here today. Really my peppers have not been that prolific. There have been one or two big peppers that have popped up but other than that it's more green plant than anything else. I do see flower buds so hopefully I get more as time goes on. Um, and this last pepper over here which is kind of crowded in there is an Aleppo pepper and I haven't seen anything on that one yet either. So as we move around this plant in the middle here, let's go see what that one is. I don't even remember. Well, this one on the end is my um, shishito pepper. These are great, just like ro little roasted peppers. I'm gonna pull a couple of them and pop them in there. I do like them to get bigger. There's some here that are on the small side, so I'm just gonna let them hang there for a while longer till they really get worthy of eating in my mind. But here's a nice big one right back here. This one right here, that's a good size one. So, um, this one right here is cayenne long. So you can see I've got bunches of these little green peppers and bunches of flowers, so it's gonna produce a lot for me. Um, those, of course, I'm gonna wait for them to turn red before I pick them, so let's work my way around the peppers. Down here back is a poblano pepper. Um, there's a couple or three poblanos up here that you can see, I'm sure. Um, I'm never really quite sure when to pick them, but it really doesn't hurt to leave them on there to turn red. Uh, a red poblano is just an ancho. So ancho peppers are great in things. Um, the next two plants, this one and this one, are Luchauer paprika peppers. And what's cool about that is that's my one and only red pepper that I have here. It's the only one I've got so far. Um, my plan with these peppers was to like cook them up or smoke them and then dry them and make paprika. But I might have to go a different route with it because I'm not going to get but so many at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one because it's red. I don't know what the rules are about leaving them on the plant or not, but this is a Luchauer pepper. Oh, I could have left it a little bit longer. Um, and this one back here is an Alma paprika pepper. I don't know what color they're supposed to be. I thought they were supposed to be red, but they're both yellow that I see there. So I'm going to have to um, look into that and then I'll know when they're going to be ready to pick. Um, the other thing I have growing in here in this garden is this nibbled on plant here. Ooh, check it out. This is an eggplant. It's a Turkish eggplant. I forget the exact name of it. I wonder if this might be the label. Turkish orange eggplant. Okay, so that's very descriptive. Um, so there's one there. And if you look up the plant, there's some green ones in there growing. Um, 
like I said, I think I overcrowded this garden. I planted all the plants kind of toward the middle because I had the onions around the outside and I really think that these plants could have used a little bit more space. The other thing that's not really helping is that this spaghetti squash here has been prolific. Look at this, down here is the first spaghetti squash that I got. And to be honest, he's almost ready. He's got a little green left. I'm gonna leave him on a little longer. But these guys are ripening up quickly. And as you see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go around. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 spaghetti squash that I see clearly on these two plants. And that's pretty good. I'm very pleased with that. The other kind of squash I have growing in here is honey nut butternut squash. And that one, well, it's hard to find the actual plant because it's mixed up with cucumber, but as you can see, oh, he's hard to see. I do have a honey nut butternut squash forming right there and another one down there. And so I've seen five or six of them. There's not a ton. Um, we'll see exactly how they come out. They've got a long way to go. Another thing you can see here is I've got a cucumber. This type of cucumber is a muncher cucumber. Um, I'll let it get a little bit bigger. There's another one there and then I'll pick it and eat it or make cucumber salad. There's another butternut squash. The butternut squash has actually trailed all the way over here to this other side. There's the honey nut squash over there. And he said, I was hoping these things would climb up and over the trellis and it, they appear to have done so. Um, on this side, there's two more varieties of cucumber. This side, I think these are straight eight cucumbers. They're very prickly. Um, that's one of the bigger ones that's in here right now. I, I picked two the other day and I just made them into a cucumber salad. Um, so there were two at picking size and the rest of them are pretty small. The other kind of cucumber that I planted in here is an Armenian white cucumber. And I thought that hadn't done anything at all. And it hasn't done much, believe me. But right here, is one little Armenian white cucumber just starting to form. So I'll get at least one cucumber out of this plant. As you can see, I've got some nasturtiums down at the bottom to help with bugs and just because of their pretty. And my black coated runner beans are still throwing pretty flowers up over my trellis. That was really the purpose of them. I do intend to pick the beans the black hooded runner beans, let me find. Uh, the beans are kind of hidden in here. They've been buried by cucumber. Oh, here's some. Um, I'm gonna pick them as a dry bean. I don't think that's typically what people do with these. Um, they're huge beans. They're like the size of giant lima beans, only they're black, which is cool. They're kind of like a purplish black color, which is neat. Um, over here, we're getting into the tomato crop. Another thing you'll notice down here is that I Put a bunch of lettuce down here not this grass obviously as kind of a cover crop to take up some space and the lettuce is growing i've got basil of various kinds growing in here but um the little tomatoes are doing well um this first tomato plant that you see here is a cherry tomato called chocolate sprinkles um i'll pick a few of those this is what they look like when they're ripe. Um, I've been picking these for a little while now. I get a few every day. Put them in my bucket of harvest um, and move on. One of the cherry tomatoes I have here, this one is um, sun gold cherry tomatoes. I, I really like these too. They're delicious, so here's some more chocolate sprinkles. I've planted my tomatoes close enough together that they've kind of merged. But as I go through here, here's the sun golds. I've been out here picking cherry tomatoes every day. I love when it gets to that point in time where they're right there and ready to go. 
Um, there's so many good things to do with cherry tomatoes from salad to pizza to just snacking. So it's kind of hard to be disappointed in them. Um, so we've got chocolate sprinkles over here. The sun gold is the plant in the middle. As you can see, I've got a marigold down there finally blooming for me. And on this side, there is a tomato called purple bumblebee. I'm not entirely sure what they look like when they're perfectly ripe. This one's not quite. It's, it's kind of um, firm still. To me, I think they look very much like the chocolate sprinkles, just rounder. Whereas these chocolate sprinkles tomatoes are kind of long and have this little point at the bottom. These tomatoes are round and don't have a point at the bottom. But the color, I think, is going to be about the same. I should get some ripe ones eventually. Well, this one might be. No, it's still too little green. Yeah, they feel a little too firm for me to pick, so I'm going to leave them alone for a little while longer. But you can see that the plant is prolific. Now, this plant is a green tomatillo. Um, I got this at a plant swap and it got started in the ground here a little bit late in the season and it's got tons of flowers on it and it looks like some fruits forming. I've never grown a tomatillo before, but hey, why not? They're good. I can make salsa out of it or any other number of things. So moving on, we're going to move on to my full size tomatoes. Um, down here, and we'll probably take a better look at them from the other side, these are a paste tomato. Mm, trying to remember the name of it. I'll read the tag when I get to the other side. But these here are tomato called Black Beauty. I've harvested a few of these already. Um, as you can see, I have tons of them. This one right back here that was ripe. So let me pull this one off. It feels soft. Oh, well, maybe it's not. It's not really one to come away. Hmm. As you can see, they're starting this, maybe this one will. Ah, no, it's breaking my plant. Ugh, that's never good. Well, didn't want that to happen. Well, this one is um, ready to go. It's a little green, but it'll ripen up in the house. Um, it does feel soft. I broke these off the plant, so I'm gonna, um, I'm just gonna leave them here. They'll be okay. This one also, feels soft enough to pick. I thought they would get a little bit darker. Oh, well, no, it's pretty solidly on there. Maybe I'll, there we go. Yeah, I thought they would get a little bit darker, but they'll probably finish ripening up inside. I'm gonna leave everything else. Oh, this is, that's a weird one. Look at that one. It's actually two, one tomato. This part's not ripe and this part is ripening. Well, I'll just have to be patient or leave it alone. One or the other. All right. The next one that you can see clearly over here is Purple Cherokee. And I believe this one is ready to be harvested. Yeah, it came away right away. This is what a Purple Cherokee tomato will look like. Um, I'm gonna leave it on my counter a little bit longer to get rid of that green, but these things are ready to be picked, that's for sure. Um, I've got a couple more of those in there. You can see all the black beauties I have, there's tons they're just slow to ripen but they were quick to form that's for sure um a surprise over here is i have this red cherry tomato i didn't purposely plant this i'm not sure if i bought a plant that was mislabeled or if um i'm not sure what happened but either way i apparently have red cherry tomatoes so i may as well harvest them and eat them. They're tasty and that's all that matters. Um, there's of course some more of the purple Cherokees in here that haven't ripened yet. There are tons of plants. They're everywhere. So anyway, let's move on around. This plant right here is the Oregon Spring tomato. These were supposed to be like really quick um, tomatoes to turn red. They were supposed to be an early tomato. And while I had tomatoes early, they didn't ripen early, that's for sure. So, but there they are. 
they're still growing. And next to that, and it's easier probably to see from this side, is a light colored tomato. This one right here is called a white Tomasol tomato, and this one's ready to go for sure. You can see it's actually starting to pink up. They, they, it's not, it's a white tomato. So this is much harder to pick. It's harder to pick these than you would think with only one hand. There you go, big white tomato, slight blush of pink on the bottom. They're a good tomato. They taste nice, they slice well. I've also used them to make sauce. I make any tomatoes into sauce, to tell you the truth. Um, basically, that's my good go-to thing to do with tomatoes. When I have too many, I just cook them down and puree them. Um, cherry tomatoes, if you have too many of those, I've actually just cleaned them and frozen them whole. Whole frozen cherry tomatoes later in the year when you just put them in your chili is delicious. Here's another, um, I think this is a purple Cherokee. Yeah, because it came out of that plant there. Another purple Cherokee tomato. Um, you can see more of the black beauties on this side. Yeah. I have another tomato in here called Black from Tula, and actually these ones that I've been calling Purple Cherokee might actually be Black from Tula tomatoes. I don't know. It's That's what happens when you plant oddly colored tomatoes right next to each other, and they are strangely similar in look. Um, so maybe I'll look these up later and figure it out. This one definitely came off of the plant labeled Black from Tula, and it looks like the others, so maybe I haven't even harvested any. Cherokee is yet. Whew. It's really hard to tell. Uh, this marigold over here is huge and has barely bloomed at all. Mm. Uh, we got another marigold. And I said I would tell you the name of the paste tomato that I have over here. Let me find the light. Yeah, it's called a San Marzano paste tomato. As you can see, I've got piles of them under here. None of them are quite red yet. They're all kind of clustered together. I'm hoping they don't, oh, that one fell off. I'll have to take it in and let it ripen on the counter. Maybe I oughta, ooh, didn't mean to do that. Pulled off a green one. I'm gonna take a few of these in and let them ripen on the counter just because it creates some airspace around those others. They're all touching. It's really wet here and I don't want them to rot or something. Um, anyway, what you see here is my carrot plant that I let go to seed. Um, I'm still waiting for it to go to seed. It's blooming. I'm not sure if these are seeds forming now. I really don't know. I've never done this before. But I'm hoping for some carrot seeds. We'll see what happens. Got a few more cherry tomatoes to pick now that I can reach them on this side. Oh man, look at these. These are those, um, the bumblebee ones. It's a little firm. I don't think I'll pick any more of them. This one looks like it fell off. Hmm. All right. Anyway, another thing I have down here is I still have a little bit of lettuce left over from earlier in the season. I'm just letting it hang out as a cover crop. Um, and that's it, basically. Thanks for coming along while I harvested my vegetables. I hope that your vegetable crops are as successful as mine. Have a great day.